Hey guys, Sam here from Panhandle Precision. Today's video is going to be about Kestrel and battery life. So I get a lot of comments from guys or questions from guys about battery life in the Kestrel. How long do the batteries last? They last a very long time. Now, the I don't have a definitive answer for that because I've never killed one. Now, the other night I decided I'm starting to do some testing on this Leica2800.com. So I left it out overnight with the Kestrel just to do a uh, performance test when the temperature dropped down into single digits and mid-teens. We had a cold front that came in before this last round of snowstorms and the temperature stayed at 10 degrees or lower for over 24 hours plus wind. So it was brutal out here. We had uh, you know, sub-zero wind chill temps and at the end I came out, I fired this up, rained something and it made a connection to the Kestrel and I thought right on. So I posted a picture of that testing on my Instagram page and I started to get questions about battery life in the Kestrel. Now in my experience, this, this Kestrel, this is the Elite that I got when it first came out. It was in November of 2015. This is the one that I did the review on in March of 2016 on PanOutPrecision.com. Now one of the things I did, and I didn't have a lot of experience with ballistic Kestrels at that time, but one of the things that I did was I left it outside for about a week. Just left it hanging on a fence post. And every now and then, I would go out and fire it up and see if it worked. Now, at that time, the temperature was much like it was three days ago, where it would never get above low teens, and it would drop down around zero or even below at night. So uh, that, that was pretty amazing to me because it's an electronic device, and I would have thought that it wouldn't do that. But since then, since those you know three years' worth of experience in the field, hunting with it, using it to test devices like this all the time, uh, letting the, my kids use it for all kinds of things at school. You know, basically using it all the time, literally 12 months out of the year, I've come to trust this to the point that I, I don't think I ever have to worry about replacing the batteries in an emergency situation like, oh wow, the batteries are dead, I have to replace the batteries. Now having said that, I do it as a maintenance thing with all the devices I own. I always replace batteries on a you know, somewhat regular schedule. I think Kestrels are like twice a year, sometimes once a year. Anyway, back to the point, I thought, you know, I've never actually turned one on, left it turned on to see how long it would last because, you know, if guys are going to start carrying rangefinders that uh, Bluetooth to a Kestrel, probably the best way to do that is to turn your Kestrel on and put it in your pack or something like that. And that way, all you have to worry about is the rangefinder. You get to see an animal or whatever, you range, the the dope, the corrections come up in the rangefinder, and you're off to the races. You never have to touch your Kestrel that way. So I thought, let's do a test on it. And we had two snowstorms scheduled to roll in, so I left them where they were standing, fired up the Kestrel, left it turned on, established a Bluetooth connection with an iPad in the house, and when I started the test, it was 20 degrees out, I believe. And that was at 9 o'clock two days ago. So 9 o'clock the next morning rolls around, I'm thinking, well, yeah, it still works. I'm looking on the iPad. It's giving me, you know, real-time uh, weather conditions. 12 hours is about as long as anybody will ever leave one turned on and be out hunting or something. And then I thought, well, let's run it for 24 hours. So I ran it until 9.30 that night, and it was still working. Uh, in the meantime, all throughout that day, I would come out and I would range with the Leica and get a correction up in the Kestrel and on the Leica. So at the end of 24 hours, I thought, well, what would 36 hours hurt? So I let it run one more night into the next morning. Right now, we're at 38 hours on this being turned on. At 34 hours, I did another test with the Leica. I had to scrape the ice off the lenses, scrape the ice off the power button, the main fire button up here. And in 18 seconds from the time I scraped that off and pushed the button on a tree back there, I had a real-time correction displayed in that screen and on the Kestrel. So... Uh, you know, 30, that was 34 hours, now we're at 38 and it's still working. That's a long time for an electronic device to be turned on when the temperature is between 20 and 30 degrees outside. And, you know, it just never got a rest. It was always that cold. So, anyway, my point is, a lot of guys get Kestrels, they fire them up at a match or something when it's cold out like it is right now, and they see their battery percentage is not 100%. In other words, it can be as low as, you know, in the teens or even 20 or 40 or whatever. So they worry about using their Kestrel. They don't want to turn it on and do much to it because they're afraid the battery's going to go dead. In my experience, that's not the case at all. When you fire one of these up and it's as cold as it is out right now, 
even with a brand new battery that's never been used before, you're going to get a low percentage of charge showing on the startup screen. And oftentimes it'll be in the teens. But if you take the Kestrel, warm the Kestrel up, which warms the battery up, you're probably going to get 100% again. In fact, most of these will run at 100% forever. The battery that was in this, I put in in October of 2018. So, what is it, two, four, four months of using constantly, all the time, out in this kind of condition, and leaving it turned on like this, and running Bluetooth corrections with the rangefinder, plus the link through my iPad. It's not going to hurt it, so just go ahead and run it. Don't replace the battery in there. Now, you know, you can listen to me tell you all you want on this video, but I would recommend that you gain some experience with that by just turning your Kestrel on, throwing it out in your pickup, or throw it outside when it's cold out because it's winter everywhere right now. If you don't have cold temperatures to test that in, throw it in your refrigerator overnight. Fire it up, you'll see that the percentage of the battery shows low, but the Kestrel still works fine. So in other words, there's a some kind of a software thing where the voltage of the battery has dropped below a threshold that the Kestrel doesn't like and it gives you a percentage saying that the battery is low. In reality, even if the battery is low, it doesn't matter. It still runs. The Kestrel still works fine. So don't replace the battery every time you see that on there. The one time that I do replace the battery is when I'm doing a firmware upgrade because I do mine wirelessly via link instead of off of a computer with the dongle. Now, when you get done doing one of those, you'll notice that the battery percentage will say something like 60 or 70 percent, even though you're at ambient temperature in your house, say 70 degrees. Uh, it's been my experience that they won't come back up to 100 percent, so I always replace them after a firmware upgrade. Speaking of firmware upgrades, I've seen some stuff on the internet where guys say this battery percentage thing all has to do with the, whatever the latest firmware upgrade was. Like I said, I've had this since November 2015. I don't know how many firmware upgrades there have been since then, but the entire time I've owned this, it's done the same thing. It showed a low percentage when the, the unit was cold and the battery inside was cold, and then it would rise back up to 100% when it was warm. I'm at uh, firmware... Here, I'm going to turn it off right now. Turn it back on. My firmware is 1.24. Now, when I just fired that up, the battery percentage shows 16%. What I'm going to show you in a little while is when we get that warm back up in the house, it's going to show 100%. But uh, anyway, I'll come around to the front now. We'll do some more video with the Kestrel. Okay, here's the Kestrel. I just pulled it out of the wind vane mount there. Man, that snow is cold. Anyway, I'm going to turn it off, and then I'll fire it back up, and we can see what the percentage says. Toggle it off. Toggle it back on. What does that say? 19% it said. So it's actually gone up a little bit. It was 16% when I did it back there. But as this warms up, as the battery starts to warm up inside the Kestrel, that percentage will keep rising and eventually it'll say 100% again. In the end, none of this really matters except to say that if you see a low percentage when it's cold out like that, especially, I can't assign a temperature to it, but I would say... 40 degrees, maybe 50 degrees and lower, and this has been out. In other words, that battery is cold soaked to that temperature for a very long time, like overnight or several hours. You're probably going to get a percentage of charge that shows lower than you think it ought to be. Now, the other thing I have noticed is that matches, rifle matches. I was letting my son play with mine last year, uh, messing around with wind calls and stuff like that while I was shooting. And he actually used it long enough to make the percentage of the battery go down a little bit. But when we got home and fired it back up, it was at 100% again. So there is a discharge of that battery. And then there is a, uh, I don't know if it's a discharge. I don't even know what you would call it. But it, the output, the voltage output, isn't all that the battery could be when it's really cold out. Now this is a lithium battery. This is a AA Energizer lithium battery. So, you know, typically speaking, they're pretty good in the cold, but for some reason the Kestrel looks at that voltage output that that battery's putting out and doesn't like it, uh, gives it a lower percentage than what we would think it should have, but the Kestrel still functions fine on it. So I guess that's the whole point. It still works. Don't worry about it. Alright, it's the next day, and I'll tell you what, I'm not getting too far away from this wood stove after yesterday, but anyway, I didn't have time to follow this up 
last night. I had to do some more things with that rangefinder, so I didn't let this rest at room temperature, but it kept working the whole entire time I was messing with the rangefinder. So let's go ahead and fire it up after this has been sitting in the house overnight at 68 or 70 degrees or whatever. Of course, I can't see it in the viewfinder, so let me turn it back off, fire it back up. It says 100%. Now logic tells me that that's probably not an accurate representation of that battery, although it still works. But uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. This battery's been in here since October. I changed it out right back right when we got back from our Wyoming antelope hunt, <clears throat> and from then on we had a one-day PRS match. We had a two-day PRS match. Uh, we hunted with it all through November into December. I had a T&E unit of that 28.com that I didn't stop testing until the week before SHOT Show so that had been about mid-January and then I brought the new 2800 home from SHOT Show so you know <laughs> there might have been two weeks time from October until now when I wasn't using this in some capacity so that plus sitting out there for 38 hours like that you know I if I wasn't doing this test I would probably replace the battery right now but what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this ride I'll just leave it in there. Uh, the next time I would be scheduled to replace it as maintenance would probably be May, somewhere in May, springtime. But uh, if it goes dead before then, I'll leave it in the comment section below this video. Now I'm not going to tell you not to replace your battery, but I will tell you that don't be distressed by getting a low percentage when you fire this thing up cold. And don't be afraid to use it. I, I have run into guys literally at batches that walked up to me, they saw me using my Kestrel, and they said, hey, I've got this new Kestrel, but uh, when I fired it up, the battery was dead, so I just left it in my truck. So I asked them, well, when you fired it up, did it, would it not start up or something? Oh, no, it started up, but the percentage was really low, so I didn't think it would work, so I just left it in the truck. But don't do that. Don't do that. Just use it. It's normal for them to come up with a low percentage. Now, one other question I get is, should I replace my battery if I leave my Kestrel sitting in a, my hunting pack all year and then I only use it right before I go hunting? No. It's not my experience at least that you have to do that. I just checked. I have a Sportsman, the 5K Series Sportsman, sitting in the safe. The last time I turned that on was to do a firmware update, I believe in March of 2018, so almost a year ago, and I would have put a new battery in it at the time. I fired it up and it's 100% and everything works fine. So long-term storage is fine with these things. These uh, AA lithium batteries, I think they're good for 20 years. This one says October of 2037. So don't worry about it. They're not going to leak. These are not going to blow up inside your Kestrel. So you don't have anything to worry about there either. I have a 5700 Ballistics that sits in my range box now. That's been sitting out in my pickup now for about three months and the garage isn't heated so everything works fine uh, you know I don't sell Kestrels but if you email me and ask me about ballistic solvers odds are I'm going to recommend you get a Kestrel no matter what you end up with uh, I think they're the most reliable electronic device I've ever owned they're just good stuff and the batteries last a very long time in them so as I always tell you don't believe anything I say Go out and try it yourself. You'll find out that you'll get the same results that I have. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you next time.